next. Hi all, myself Nadi, and I welcome you all in another, in another interesting session of IV75. This program is structured as a part of DBT Science Setu to commemorate 75 years of Independence Day celebration. This week's presentation is made by our PhD students, Shivani, Sharda, and Ramamai. They will showcase the life of eminent woman scientist, Dr. Kamal Ranade. Post this session, we will take you through virtual tour of RCP facilities, followed by which uh, there, would be a, there would be a question and answer session uh, by Dr. Prasad, who is assistant professor at RCB. Now, without further ado, I would request the team to start their presentation. Thank you. We have gathered today to commemorate the 75th year of Indian independence by means of today's webinar on one of the most eminent scientists in India. Today, we will be showcasing the life of Dr. Kamal Randive, who has created a milestone on Indian cancer research. Battle against cancer is perhaps one of humanity's longest. She is not only the trailblazer in cancer research, but also in creating, shaping, and leading organizations like Indian Cancer Research Center and IWSA, that is Indian Women Scientist Association. In 1900, when there was lack of women's education, Kamal Samarth was born to a well-educated family. She was born on 8th November 1917 in Pune, Maharashtra to Dinkar Dattatraya Samarth and Chantabai Dinkar Samarth. Her father was a biologist who taught in the Ferguson College of Pune and being a teacher, he always wanted that all his children were well educated. Kamal did her schooling at HHCP Girls High School in Hujur Baga, Pune, Maharashtra. After her schooling, her father Hello. wanted her to study medicine and marry a doctor. But Kamal decided differently and started her education in botany and zoology as her main subjects from Ferguson College. In 1934, she received her Bachelor's of Science degree with distinction from Ferguson College. At the age of 22, she got married to Mr. Jaising Trimbak Randive, who is a mathematician and not a doctor as her father wished. After marriage, Kamal wanted to pursue her postgraduate studies and her husband helped in that. Further, she worked on cytogenetics of NONSE for her master's degree from Agriculture College, Pune. Later on, she got an opportunity to do cancer research at Tata Memorial Hospital under the guidance of Dr. Vasant Ramji Khanolkar, who is a renowned pathologist. In the year 1950, Kamal obtained her PhD from Bombay University under the supervision of Dr. V. R. Khanolkar for her research on breast cancer in mice. Kamal was mentored by Dr. V. R. Khanolkar. Dr. Khanolkar was the first to show the existence of dhoti cancers, that is a type of skin cancer that occurs along the waistline. He was among the earliest to demonstrate the carcinogenicity of tobacco. He was the first to use needle aspiration cytology for the diagnosis of neoplasms. He was an acclaimed teacher and was on the boards of numerous international organizations. He still serves as a role model to many scientists in this field and was awarded Padma Bhushan in 1954.
Kamal's relocation to Bombay, now Mumbai, post her marriage proved to be immensely conducive for her career, as she now had the chance to work with Dr. Kanolkar. Before joining postdoctoral training, Dr. Randive worked in Tata Memorial Hospital and her work on breast cancer created an impact in the field. She worked on mammary glands of mice which described that extra chromosomal material can also contribute to breast cancer development and these factors are transmitted by cytoplasm of ovum or in milk on which young ones is reared. Previous investigators failed to use homozygous strains of mice and supervise the changes that supervene at definite age periods of mice. But her work took care of all these drawbacks and concluded that mammary glands of susceptible mice generally develop in less rapidly than those of resistant ones. Dr. Kamal wanted to pursue her postdoctoral research abroad. She obtained the Rockefeller Foundation scholarship and got a chance to work at John Hopkins University in Baltimore, USA. There she worked under the guidance of Dr. George Otto Gay, who had successfully established the in vitro culture of first human cancer cell line that we all popularly know as HeLa cells. Kamal was extensively trained in cell culture techniques by the stalwart himself and secured many publications within a very short time. She did expertise in the field of cancer and in vitro methods when she came back from John Hopkins University. In post-independent India, scientific research was still in its nascent stage. Instead of continuing her research in the USA, she decided to contribute to the Indian scientific domain. She joined ICRC as a senior research officer and later served as its director from 1966 to 1970. Kamal mentored her students and in process built India's first tissue culture lab at ICRC. With the help of her colleagues, she also developed three other research units in ICRC which includes carcinogenesis, cell biology and immunology. The scientists successfully proved the relation between susceptibility of cancer and the interaction between hormones and tumor virus, utilizing mouse models. Kamal's research focused on the pathophysiology of ca cancers like leukemia, breast cancer and esophageal cancer. Her work on leprosy bacteria led to the discovery of the necessary upgrade on leprosy vaccine in India. Dr. Kamal Randive's re-entry in Indian Cancer Research Center proved to be historic as she and her colleagues set up the first ever tissue culture lab in India in ICRC. At that time, Kamal was a senior research scientist in ICRC. She recruited many aspiring biologists and biochemists to set up the tissue culture lab and to expand the scope of cancer research. ICRC is currently known as Advanced Center for Treatment, Research and Education in Cancer, in short ACTREC. Dr. Kamal was one of the early educationists who understood the problem of brain drain and tried her best to encourage Indian scientists to return back to India and use the knowledge and technology to serve the nation. And there is a one short story about her fight with brain drain. Once she visited Philadelphia in 1969. Before the visit, she had asked the organizers to invite Indian postdocs with whom she could have an informal chat. The reason was obvious to encourage them to return to India. Notable scholars trained under Dr. Kamal. 
Dr. Ulhas Wag, who became the founder director of NCCS Pune, an interactive research school for health affairs. Dr. Sudha Gangal, who established the Department of Cancer Immunology in Cancer Research Institute. She was the research director of Vadia Children Hospital, Mumbai. Dr. Avinash N. Bise, who became the director of Cancer Research Institute and project director of ACTREC. Dr. Kamal got more than 200 papers published. And here are some of Dr. Kamal's renowned publications, which shows that how she was interested in different aspects of cancer. She worked on memory gland cancer to chemical carcinogens like 1256-dibinatricone and she also assessed the presence of carcinogens in edible oils. She showed that prolactin together with progesterone has a diverse effect on lobuloalveolar development of mice memory glands. She also worked on chemical carcinogens like 1256-dibinatricone and she found out that it was as potent as 20 methyl cholanatricane. She even worked on edible oils to know the presence of carcinogens in edible oils, which is a daily food item to common people. She used animal models for this study and found, for this study and found out that market sample of popular brand of tin mustard oil was carcinogenic to mice, when given to them from three different routes which caused them stomach tumor and epidermoid carcinomas. She even worked on leprosy, which backed her Watmel Foundation Award. Dr. Kamal and her associates successfully developed mouse model for leukocyte leukemia which was accepted by the Jackson Laboratory and even now it is in use. Jackson Laboratory is an independent, non-profit biomedical research institution. This lab is also the world's source for more than 8,000 strains of genetically defined mice. Dr. Kamal was a feminist who identified the needs and equalities in society. In her book entitled Indian Women in Science and Their Role in National Development, which got published in 1978, she summarized the status of women in India. She wrote that despite facing discrimination in Indian labs, there is a steady increase of women scientists in diverse scientific research fields. She also mentioned about changing attitudes of men, women and families, about women scientists and their work and careers. In her early career only, she decided to work even after retirement and also strongly encouraged other women scientists to continue work after their retirement. True to her words, upon retirement in 1989, she worked with Satya Niketan a voluntary organization, voluntary organization with whom she collected data on nutritional conditions of tribal children in state of Maharashtra. She has also spent her time providing advice and education to women in rural villages and tribes in the area of on health and medical care through government-sponsored projects under IWSA. Dr. Kamal and few other women scientists got together and started thinking that science should not remain between four walls and there is no use of just publishing papers and living ego guitar. There was a major need to take science to society for the upliftment of other class of society and women. In 1972, along with 11 other women scientists, from different scientific institutions came along and registered Indian Women Scientists Association. It is an all India social welfare voluntary, non-profit, secular, non-political, charitable organization which has 11 branches, namely in Delhi, Bangalore, Padodra, Pune and ETC. 
Its main branch is located in Vashi, Mumbai, Maharashtra. It is open to all women with science and technology background, which also offers scholarships to needy female students having scientific temper based on her mind. Dr. Kamal's awards and recognition. In 1962, she became the acting director of ICRC. In 1964, she won the Watwell Foundation Award for her work in the field of leprosy. In 1966 to 1967, she worked as head of biology division, Cancer Research Institute, Tata Memorial Center. In 1970, she founded and established the Indian Women Scientists Association. In 1977 till 1979, she served as IWSA president. And in 1982, she got her Padma Bhushan Award. In Dr. Kamal's work, we get a glimpse of a feminist who recognized the needs and equalities in society while also a true scientist continually promoting STEM education. She may be forgotten in books, but her obsession with the advancement of excellence in science and giving back to her nation continue to impact the Indian STEM society today. She breathed her last on 10th of April 2001, leaving behind a legacy to be cherished forever. Dr. Rajani Avinash Bhise is a renowned Indian scientist and an INSA fellow. Her specialization is in environmental carcinogenesis and molecular epidemiology of cancer, including occupational hazards. Dr. Rajani was not a direct colleague of Dr. Kamal, but she had a close association with her. She is one of the greatest admirers of Dr. Kamal and wrote her memoirs in the book Leelavati's Daughters. Dr. Rajani has kindly agreed to share few of her experiences with us. Ma'am, how did you come to know her or meet her and what was your first impression when you met Dr. Kamal? Uh, I mean, she was a very towering figure and people were really afraid to talk to her um, in because she you know she inspired a lot of awe after obtaining a bachelor's degree i decided to work at uh, indian cancer research center uh, known as icrc then now cri cancer research institute actrate uh, when i went to the center i found you know three uh, very senior ladies uh, talking in a corridor I had known only about uh, Dr. Uh, Mrs. Kamal Randiwe. So I just asked them, you know, I want to meet uh, Dr. Ka Kamal Randiwe uh, uh, to know something about this institute. So uh, where is her office or something like that? I was very timid. And uh, she said, uh, actually, the person who I like best of the three was Dr. Randiwe, <laughs> a blue-eyed uh, um, very fair and dignified lady. Uh, so she herself told me, oh, you wait here for some time and somebody will come and show you her office. So that's how I first met her and I will never ever forget this uh, first meeting with her. Can you please tell us about some of her students who are notable researchers? Our greatest colleague was 
डॉक्टर बापट सी बी बापट देन वॉट हैपन लेटर वॉट हैपन वॉज वन ऑफ अ कॉलिग्स डॉक्टर उल्लास बाग ही बिकेम दाउंडर डिरेक्टर ऑफ एन सी सी एस इन पुणे डॉक्टर अविनाश भिसे डिरेक्टर कैंसर रिसर्च इंस्टिट्यूट एंड प्रोजेक्ट डिरेक्टर एक्ट्रेक आई थिंक एक्ट्रेक ओज इज ओज इम इट्स एक्जिस्टेंस एंड डॉक्टर सुधा गांगल ऑल्सो बिकेम डिरेक्टर ऑफ लैब इन बाडिया चिल्ड्रन्स हॉस्पिटल इन मुंबई हाउ डिड शी पुट अप द फर्स्ट टिश्यू कल्चर लैब इन इंडिया you know what she did was when she started to set up tissue culture lab uh, she got chemist uh, biologist uh, biochemist um, uh, as colleagues and because of interaction of all these colleagues she was able to set up a tissue culture lab what was her overarching dream as a scientist her quest really was to create a far reaching base for cancer research in india and even today cancer research institute remains the premier institute for cancer research in the country what hallmark qualities according to you made dr kamal rana ji uh, so successful in her life it was her sincerity and uh, ability to create and nurture talent in her students who had different interest so that then they could set up a uh, different labs and departments in the institute I hope you all enjoyed the journey of cancer crusader Dr. Kamal Rana Dewe. Now we would like to take you through a virtual tour of RCB, and followed by that, we'll have a question answer session for which I would request all of you to post your questions in the comment box. Thank you. Please play the video. Regional Center for Biotechnology is located in a tranquil environment along the Gurugram Faridabad Expressway. It is an autonomous institute established under auspices of UNESCO by the Department of Biotechnology, Government of India. The primary focus of RCB is to provide world-class education, training to create high-quality human resource in biotechnology and conduct innovative research at the interface of multiple disciplines the infrastructure at rcb has developed at a rapid pace since inception of the institution in 2010 with state of the art research labs teaching labs innovative classrooms central instrumentation facilities small animal facility bio safety level 3 facility a bio repository and state of the art advanced instrumentation facilities like the advanced technology platform center and a bio incubator 
which serves as a reservoir for incubating ideas in the area and help them reach commercialization. There are various areas of research in RCB. The research group under the area titled Cell Biology, Development and Behavior focus on unlocking the secrets of cells, how they divide and how stem cells develop into muscle in addition to studying the cellular and molecular origins of how organisms behave. Areas of agricultural biotechnology aim to tackle some issues by harnessing the existing genetic diversity in plants and their inherent capacities to adapt to abiotic and biotic stress conditions in order to develop innovative and durable methods of crop improvement. Groups working on infectious diseases, both bacterial and viral, aim at developing novel therapeutic strategies against infectious agents. Using tools such as mass spectrometry and microscopy, these researchers will shed light on cellular and molecular basis of bacterial infection and the response of the human host towards these infections. They are trying to find novel solutions to protect the people against diseases such as chikungunya virus. Japanese encephalitis virus and dengue virus. Protein structure and design groups are structural biologists who have a molecular view of life and use cutting-edge methods like macromolecular X-ray crystallography or cryo-electron microscopy to imagine biological molecules in their functional state. This information is used to develop novel therapeutic strategies against pathogenic bacteria and viruses and for protein engineering to prepare molecules with desired properties. Researchers at RCB are also working towards developing innovative biotechnological applications such as novel drug delivery systems, new diagnostic tools, novel engineered protein with improved desired proteins and improved methods to obtain desired products in large scale. These researchers subject laboratory and clinical samples to cutting-edge microscopy, proteomics and genomics methods coupled with flow cytometry to shed light on the etiology of disease and utilize this knowledge to identify solutions to these disorders. The quality of research conducted at RCB is excellent with faculty winning top honors like the Shanti Swarup Bhatnagar, the National Bioscience the Innovative Young Biotechnologist Awards and the Ramanujan, Ramalinga Swami and DBT Welcome Alliance Fellowships. Since research-based learning is the hallmark of RCB, the academic programs here are deeply enmeshed with the research programs. The academic programs fulfill RCB's core mandate to provide quality education and training in the area of life sciences and biotechnology. The PhD program in biotechnology is for students who are interested in working at the interface of multiple disciplines to find novel solutions for problems in health and agriculture. RCB has recently started integrated PhD program in biotechnology offered to students with graduate degree in any discipline of science from India and abroad. The program provides extensive learning opportunities in the broad field of life sciences and biotechnology. RCB has also recently initiated an interdisciplinary doctoral programs in the area of biostatistics and bioinformatics through collaboration with the global pharmaceutical giant GlaxoSmithKline GSK being conducted in partnership with other institutions by creating a virtual faculty pool. The focus of this program is on creating specialized manpower for the healthcare industry. As an outreach activity, RCB also offers research training programs for research-driven undergraduate and postgraduate students of science from various universities. Trainees get a realistic experience of several facets of modern biological research that sets the tone of their embarking on a research career. Throughout the year, RCB hosts and organizes regular academic events like the RCB Bioimaging School, national and international conferences, seminars, symposia, 
and training in the frontier area of basic and applied sciences in topics such as infectious diseases, drug discovery etc. to disseminate advanced knowledge, exchange ideas, foster national and international collaborations, student exchange and networking opportunities. RCB also holds scientific communication and communication workshops for the benefit of young scientists in India. RCB has a fully functional library and houses 500 scientific textbooks and 100 administrative books in multiple copies. In addition, an electronic library provides access to a vast range of primary literature in the form of peer-reviewed journals and reviews. RCB offers faculty residences and excellent students facilities including on-campus air-conditioned hostel accommodation, modern library, meeting rooms, seminar rooms and auditorium. The hostel and student facilities are conveniently located and only a short walk away from the classrooms and laboratories. In addition, the campus also has sports and recreation facilities which encourages all-round development of the students. Campus also provides a child care facility for all students and staff to help them continue their studies and work while their babies are being taken care of. Kridangan, the creche, housed in the faculty building, is an asset on campus for employees of NCR Biotech Cluster. The spacious cafeteria in the campus serves hygienic, nutritious and delicious meals and beverages at reasonable cost. RCB also contributes towards creating resource for researchers from all over India and has engaged with institutions such as the European Synchrotron Radiation Facility in France towards this end. RCB is also involved with the UNESCO towards developing policy to ensure sustainable development at the global level and specifically in the Asian region. RCB is a young institute which is growing day by day with excellent opportunities for young people to make a career in the area of biotechnology. Good afternoon all. I am Prasad Abhnavi. I hope uh, you all are motivated by witnessing the scientific journey of Dr. Kamal Randive. And I also hope that you have enjoyed the tour of RCB. So now we'll take these questions. Uh, so we have a few questions from the audience. So somebody has asked uh, what kind of cancer research is performed at RCB? So the cancer research at RCB looks at both basic and applied aspects. So there is a lab at RCB that is involved in developing, let's say, biomaterials that can be used as a drug delivery systems to efficiently treat various cancers. And we also have a lab that, uh, that is looking at the mechanistic aspects of uh, cell division and cell communication, just to better understand the cancer development. And there is also a group that investigate the role of, let's say, calcium signaling in the tumor growth and metastasis. So if you want to know more about these research areas, then feel free to get into touch with the faculties who are working in these areas. So you can find the details of various labs working in all different research areas on the RCB website. So do give a look to that. So second question is, uh, somebody has asked, what is this MSc PhD integrated program at RCB? So, uh, so you can apply for this program let's say after completion of your bachelor's degree. So you will have to go through this interview or exam based selection procedure. And if you got selected, then you will be enrolled into this MSc PhD integrated uh, program. Uh, so after two years of masters, you have an option to continue for the PhD at RCB at any lab of your choice. Uh, however, you must have your own fellowship for doing PhD at RCB meaning that you will have to qualify a national level GRF exam like CSIR or DPT that can provide you the fellowship, right? So if you couldn't get the fellowship or if you don't have, if you don't want to do PhD at RCB, then you may leave this program with the master degree from RCB. 
So I guess uh, there are no more questions. So then we can conclude this session here. And let's meet again in the next webinar. Stay safe and bye. Goodbye.